Good evening. Thank you so much to our wonderful panelists here today, Ms. Dipali Shah from Foothill and De Anza Colleges, who's the Assistant Director. Ms. Dipali Shah is the Assistant Director of International Recruitment. She's very excited to share with you about uh, not only community colleges and the topic which is for the day, as you've seen in our outreach campaign, which is reducing the cost of undergraduate education in the US, but also about her institution, which is Foothill and De Anza Colleges. As you all know, we will be uh, spending some time on the session topics, which is the advantages of community colleges, as well as the topic, which is the re reducing cost of undergraduate education in the US. Again, as you, uh, as we all know, there's a, this, the attendees are all 12th grade students and parents. So thank you so much for joining us. And then what will happen is that um, towards the end of the session, Ms. Dipali will be more than happy to answer all your questions. Please make sure as we've communicated you in our outreach campaign that all questions must be dropped in the Q&A box and not in the chat box as Ms. Dipali will be more than happy to check that once the session is over and then she will be answering that. However, as the session goes on, please feel free to post your questions as well. Having said that, I'm now gonna hand over the stage and the microphone to Ms. Dipali. Ms. Dipali, thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday evening. We truly appreciate your kind time and I'm now going to hand over the stage and the microphone to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kunal, uh, and welcome everyone to the virtual desk of Futil and De Anza Colleges. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting to all of you, and I hope that this is going to be as informative as it could, and I hope it's going to be really helpful and useful to you. So the topic in itself, uh, without wasting any time, let me just begin. The topic in itself is really interesting because who doesn't want to save on cost? Um, you know, so we're going to discuss about how could you reduce your cost, the cost of an undergraduate program in the US because we know it could be an expensive affair for many of us. So let's get started. Um, I hope you all can see the screen. So the goal, so basically in the session today, I'm going to be discussing four things. So we're gonna understand how should we build a budget for an undergraduate um, education in the United States? We're also going to identify the right sources of funding. What all options are available to us? What could we look at uh, for, you know, the right sources that could help us fund our education? We're going to discuss the most crucial part of the session, which is how do you actually cut the cost of your undergraduate studies in the US? And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about community colleges because they directly relate to uh, reducing your cost of an undergraduate education in the US. So these are the four things that I'm going to cover in my session today. I'm going to keep it as interactive as possible, share real life examples so that you can relate with them. So let's see how it goes. Um, moving on, let's begin with building a budget in the United, like building a budget for your higher education in the US. Most importantly, you know, when I speak with families and students who've started the process of deciding which universities should they apply to, I often hear students say that, okay, these are the six universities that I want to look at. Now, let me see what is the cost that I'm going to ultimately have to shell out. So, and then they sometimes have to revisit the list, kind of rebuild it because what we follow is a very simple, straightforward methodology. We first look at the universities and then the cost. Now here, and this is from my personal experience of being you know, a counselor for over 11 years now um, in the higher education industry, I always recommend you follow the reverse psychology. You determine a budget first and then start shortlisting your universities so that you know you're headed in the right direction. Of course, the most important parameters while selecting a university are still going to be the program, the courses that are there, uh, the campus life, location, etc. But I request everyone who's planning for an undergraduate studies, whether it's United States or UK or Canada, doesn't matter. Wherever you want to study, please understand what your budget looks like first and then start shortlisting universities. It'll save a lot of efforts and will help you to make very focused decisions. Now, when you develop a budget, please ensure that you look at points beyond the tuition. Because what a lot of international students do when they are at the application stage, they only ask the university advisor, or when they look at the website, they only want to know what is the tuition, what is the annual cost of studying at a university. Well, the annual cost of studying at a university can be a little more than the tuition because 
when you look at a cost i think you should look at a holistic picture um of course tuition is mandatory but then you also got to see how much would be your annual cost of living how expensive is the city what are the options available can you do student share accommodation are you allowed to find your own accommodation to save some money uh, do you have to live on campus please look at the cost of attendance as that's as important as your tuition uh, another important feature that you must consider is the insurance because most of the universities make it mandatory for you especially in the us to get insurance on campus so find out how much does the insurance cost per year how much are you going to shell uh, ultimately towards travel how connected is the city how much would you be spending on books and supplies and pocket money because let's face it we are all social animals we need to have a social life beyond uh, of course the main focus which is education so please look at all these factors and then come to the big cost so when you look at the website of a university ensure you're on the right page you're on the international page and you're looking at the cost of attendance and not only the cost of tuition so please make sure you know this also a lot of universities in the us have an application fee they have an i20 shipment fee so ensure you're aware about these things because application fees are not refundable even if you're denied admission it's not refundable so please uh, ensure that you're aware about which universities have an application fee and how much would that be if at all you got to apply to that university so these are the things that you know these are the primary things that you need to start off with and all this information is readily available on the website the international page of every university and you can also email them in case in case you're not able to locate it because universities are very good with replying to emails um here is an estimate of some you know i've just kind of given you a comparison because uh, most of the times we're not aware about the options that we have so if you're looking at usa as your destination for higher education please understand there are 4000 plus you know universities and um, colleges in the us they are accredited so you have like a huge vast you know variety to choose from it's important to find the right fit but with that what is important for you to know is what options do you have so you all know about four year universities you know about public universities private universities but there are also community colleges in the us and we'll discuss a little more about community colleges uh, however this slide is just a glimpse into what an average estimate could be um this is of course per year of studying an undergrad degree at a at a particular type of a university so let's say if you're looking at a private institution a private university the mindset is that private universities are expensive well they could be but there are a lot of small private universities that are as affordable as many other uh, public universities so don't have a very uh, blocked mentality or a blocked um, site when you're looking at universities do research find out what are your options available similarly when you look at public universities yes public universities are funded by the state that they're located in private ones are not they're funded by you know private um, entities like the alumni etc but it is also said that private universities offer a lot of scholarships now this does not mean that public universities do not offer scholarships so please ensure that you're aware about what options you have at your disposal because like i said there could be small size private universities that are affordable there the, maybe you want to go to a huge public university then it's important that you look at what their annual you know cost of attendance looks like um it's also important to know that you have this amazing option of starting at a community college community colleges are two year institutions that provide transfer programs with universities in the us at the undergrad level we'll speak more about it in the coming slide but community colleges are very very affordable as an option to do your first two years of undergrad studies so look at that option because that will literally help you to save more than half of the cost that you would end up spending otherwise for four years of education now that's a little bit about comparing the different types of universities in the us and of course you know you have liberal arts colleges you have uh, music conservatories if you're looking only for that kind of um, league that you want to study at so please look at your options and then make a choice i would like to point out a few tips which i personally recommend to students that i know are considering us education um your family when you're looking at your family which is the main source you know for most of the students 
opting for undergrad studies in the United States, their families sponsor their education. They are the main sponsors. But the word family is not restricted to your mom and dad. It's not only restricted to your parents. You could have your paternal grandparents as your sponsors. You could have, um, you know, your uh, cousin, aunt as your sponsor. You could have a sibling sponsoring your education. And you could have more than one sponsor. So if this is something that is going on in your head that only one person can sponsor my education, it's not true. The word family can have more than one person as your sponsor. It's just that you need to be able to justify if asked at the visa or whenever why a particular person who's not a parent or a sibling is sponsoring your education. So as long as you have a valid reason, you're fine. So we are okay if you have more than one sponsor and they have more than one document to display as the financial document. It's absolutely fine. You don't need to get all your funds out from one account and shift to another and combine. Don't do all of that. We're okay with accepting more than one person as your sponsor and having multiple financial documents as long as the total final amount is equivalent to or more than the first year's cost of attendance and not tuition alone. So that's important tip, please keep that in mind. Um, and it is your responsibility to locate, I'm saying this again and again, the right cost of attendance on the website of the university. It's also mentioned on the I-20 that you get after you've received an admission, but if you don't wanna wait till that stage, you can always email the university if you're not able to locate it on the website, but look at the cost of attendance. Okay, now I know that a lot of you, and why not everybody aspires for a fully funded program. But students, please understand, getting a fully funded program at an undergrad level from US universities is highly competitive. Very few universities offer fully funded programs to freshmen, that is new students who want to begin undergrad studies, uh, new international students who want to begin undergraduate studies at their universities. So those are very few in number and they are highly competitive. So please be realistic when you read about such things or hear such things. You could be funded up to a certain amount. You know, there could be like flat $10,000 scholarships or 20% of your tuition. All that is possible, but being fully funded is super competitive and there are very limited opportunities of such type. Don't rush into filling out 20, 30 application forms. Please don't do that. I never recommend you apply to more than eight or maximum 10 universities because there's no point. Ultimately, even when you're applying, like I said, if there's an application cost, you could end up spending on that. So make the list correct. Ensure you involve financial planning at the stage of shortlisting universities and not afterwards. So that could help you save some dollars as well. And there are some universities that also offer uh, application fee waivers. So please write to them and see if you could avail one of those and if you're eligible. Moving on, what are the types of or what are the different sources of funding that you could look at? Of course, we know parents and family, that's your main source, but there are a lot of scholarship opportunities at the institution. So if you're applying to Foothill De Anza, what are our scholarships that you could look at? If you're applying to another public university or private university, do they have merit-based scholarships? Do they have uh, financial or need-based scholarships? Find out what kind of scholarships are they offering and see if you're eligible for those. Try and apply for those if you're eligible. Now, besides the scholarship piece, which again, I'm going to explain a little de in more detail in the next slide. I also want you all to know that you can work on campus. So you don't have to only think about scholarships, scholarships and scholarships. Well, it's great to get scholarships and you should work towards getting one, but you also have other ways to bring your finances or your uh, cost down. You can work for up to 20 hours a week, you know, at a US university while studying as an international student. So at Foothill De Anza, our students are allowed to work for up to 19, 19, 19 hours a week along with studying. And you can work as early as in the first quarter itself. There are on-campus job opportunities available. California pays you well. Uh, so look at the state, look at how much the university on an average pays students. Ask, communicate with students on the social media, ask the, um, you know, university on email, they'll be able to help you with most questions. Uh, so look at on-campus jobs. Now, you also know that you can do an internship after you've completed a certain amount of uh, lectures, like a certain number of classes or credits. So typically after completing one year education at, a, at an institution, after the first year, you can step out and do an internship, but you got to find an internship in the area 
that is related to what you're studying. And uh, you need to ensure that you've been communicating with your university and the designated school official to find out more about that. But sometimes internships are paid, sometimes they could be unpaid. So please be very careful when you're looking at internships and go for the right option. Think outside scholarships. Now, what do you mean by outside scholarships? Well, there are many other ways that you can bring the cost down. Look at a community college, look at reducing your um, classes because you pay per class in the US, right? Um, so let's say if you've done an AP, advanced placement test, or you have studied from an international board and you've done an HL higher level course, which qualifies towards credit transfers. So those courses that you've already done in India, if they qualify as being counted towards your transfer credits, then you could save on cost. So there are things outside scholarships. Uh, look at athletic scholarships. Now, if you know you're an athlete and you've at least played at the national or I would say international level, you could apply for an athletic scholarship. A lot of universities in the US, NCA, Division I, II, they do offer athletic scholarships, but students, it's competitive. So if you feel you've been playing at the state level, um, I'm not sure how easy it is going to be to back that, but you can try. I have seen students play at the national and international level. Only these levels be able to get it. So be realistic again. And athletic scholarship decisions are not made, made by admission officers most of the times in the US. It's the coach, it's the athletic department that makes that decision. So that's the department you've got to reach out to. Okay, so if, an, if a coach really likes you, he could also put in a word to the admission officer to consider you and then the, you can take the conversation forward. So the right person to get uh, in touch with for athletic scholarship is the coach. So get that information from the website. And I've heard there are a lot of institutions in India, religious, non-religious that offer Scholarships to students who intend to study outside India. Yes, it's happening. I know a few like the Tata Trust. Uh, there is some, uh, so sometimes, you know, you know in, uh, there are organizations that will only give you scholarships for certain universities that you apply to, or there are some that have their own competitive tests that you can take. And if you qualify, you can get a scholarship from one of the universities that have sponsored that uh, competitive test. Or you also have a lot of, you know, I've heard of this Jain Trust, uh, and there are many more in India that offer scholarships to students who want to go outside. Now, you can simply do a Google search and find out more about it. It's readily available online, but there are options. Okay, moving on. So now I've told you a few sources of funding, but let's get down to the scholarships. I know you all want to know about scholarships. Athletic scholarship, I've already told you, you can get that big athletic scholarship, but you've got to contact the coach and not um, anyone else because they are the ones who decide, the athletic department decides, and then you know, they can also put a word to the admission officer, like I said, if they really like you and ensure you're at the right level, okay? Now, the most common scholarship in the US is the merit-based scholarship. Merit-based in itself, the words are self-explanatory, merit-based. So it's based on your performance in high school, your competitive test scores, et cetera. Now there are three types of, uh, you know, when, I mean, when you look at universities and colleges, there could be three types of decisions. One, a merit-based decision where they consider only your GPA or your high school grades, you know, your 9, 10, 11, 12, or 10, 11, 12. I know when you're applying, you don't have the 12 standard final scorecard, but you have your predicted scores or you have the first quarter, first semester scores that those are absolutely fine. You can submit those. Some give you conditional uh, admits, some give you just the regular admits. So merit-based scholarships could be one that only look at your high school performance, okay? So your grades of 9, 10, 11, and first half of the 12, uh, an aggregate of that. Then there could be another type of, uh, another, you know, university that is looking at both your high school grades and the competitive test score. So they want you to take the SAT or ACT for scholarship consideration. Sometimes they don't need the SAT or ACT for admissions, but they may require it for scholarships. So there are universities that will ask you for the SAT or ACT, one of the tests for scholarship decisions. So be mindful that you're aware of that. And then you have universities that, uh, you know, are test optional. So test optional does not mean they don't need the test. Well, it is an option that you can put to the admission officer that you don't want him to consider. You've taken the SAT, but you're requesting not to look at it as the main deciding factor. So, you know, be, be mindful that you're aware of these things. 
Now, at some universities, you might have to apply separately for certain scholarships, especially the departmental scholarships or, you know, just the general merit based scholarships. And at some universities, you're automatically considered. So if you apply before the deadline and you've met the requirements of applications, you are automatically considered for scholarship. So you don't have to make any extra efforts. The only thing you need to know is find out if a university needs SAT or ACT for merit based scholarship in addition to the high school grades or they do not need SAT and ACT or ACT for your merit based scholarship. So find that out. That's important because sometimes what happens is students say, oh, this university doesn't need the SAT for admission. Great. I'm applying. Oh, now I have to look at the scholarship and it says SAT score. What is this? So yes, there are universities that want only the test score of SAT or ACT for scholarships. Again and again, I'm repeating this because you need to make a note of it. Now, there are some universities that also look at a holistic profile and most of them do. So they look at your grades, maybe SAT or ACT, maybe not. But they also look at another factor, which is called the activities. So, you know, what kind of activities, how active were you outside the classroom? Uh, have you taken part in any internships? Were you a part of a big project related to what you want to study? Um, have you done uh, social service work? You know, any activity that you excelled in, they may want to consider. And the things that they look at within these activities are how well you worked in a team. Did you demonstrate leadership skills? And how well did you bring out your talent and grow with it? So most of the times they'll ask you to write scholarship essays. And these are the things that you need to highlight. How well did you grow with the talent and explore it? Um, how well did you portray leadership skills? and whether you worked in a team. So look at those things. Uh, if they're looking at a holistic profile, you may have to write an, uh, a scholarship essay, but that totally depends on the university that you're applying to. So you'll often hear, uh, you know, US university advisors tell you it depends because the, the, the saying one rule fits all does not hold true for US education. Every university is autonomous. They have their own requirements and their own uh, ways of making decisions. There's no central body that governs them all. Um, also, there are a lot of universities that offer need-based scholarships, but I'm not sure if all of them offer that to international students. So there are a few universities that offer need-based scholarships to international students, but when you're planning to apply for one of these, they will ask you for documents like your family income, how much you really need the uh, need-based scholarship, and be mindful that first you have to qualify for admission and then only you can apply for a need-based scholarship. So it's not that you're not, uh, that they'll give you a need-based scholarship without even you qualifying for admission. It's just common sense, but I just wanted to bring that out. And we've already spoken about athletic scholarships. So that's a little more information on scholarships. Again, fully funded, is very competitive at the undergrad level in the US and very few universities offer that. Let's move on. Uh, I'm going to now talk to you about placements or like, you know, in India, places, but in the US, it's your jobs, the kind of work you do. So of course, like I said, on campus jobs, you can get paid while working on campus alongside your studies. And uh, during your holidays, you could also work for 40 hours a week uh, if you don't plan to come back home in your summer holidays or whenever you have vacation. But there is something called as curriculum practical training. So if you're looking for an internship after the first year and you find one which is paid or unpaid, depends. There's something called as curriculum practical training, CPT, which helps you to work as an international student on internships in the US. So that option is available. And you know, often students say, oh my God, I'm looking at this country or that country because they're offering post-study work visa. Well, in the US, we have a similar concept called the OPT, optional practical training. Every international student who completes a particular degree, let's say you've completed your bachelor's degree from the US, you can work for one year on OPT, okay? as an international student and get paid. Of course, you have to ensure that you get a job within you know, your two or three months of graduation. You have to find a job in the area that's related to what you study and there are a few steps that you have to follow, but this option is there. And if you have studied a major which is related to science, technology, engineering and math, the STEM areas, then your OPT would be three years and not one year. So remember, these are the things that you need to keep in mind. So the post-study work visa has the name called OPT in the US. Um, also, what I wanted to tell you is there are a lot of programs like economics or business 
uh, international business, you know, there could be programs which are STEM heavy or they fall under the STEM major. So it's not necessary that an economics program is not a STEM program. Well, it could be categorized as STEM at some universities and there are many such universities. So that is another area which you need to do a little more research on and ask, okay? Uh, I've told you about scholarships. I've told you about looking at smaller, maybe private universities if you want a more affordable option. But remember, even when you look at the big private universities, they offer a lot of scholarships. So they every university has its own merits. Public universities, we know they're funded by the state where they're located. So they also have affordability, research opportunities, scholarships. I've told you about community colleges and we're gonna discuss that a little more. I've told you about working on campus, doing uh, an internship, trying for an internship, or looking at you know post uh, graduation work, which is OPT. You can do it at the undergrad level, even with a bachelor's degree, you get the OPT. So don't even uh, think about that, okay? And we're talk talking only about undergrad, so I'm focused on that. Another thing is taking, um, like I said, summer classes. Sometimes you know some universities offer online or summer classes. And if you take those, the credits are transferable, which means those many classes you have to take lesser and that hence pay lesser. Also, uh, you know, there's another thing, like I said, reduce your load of studying. So if you've taken uh, advanced placement tests and I've already told you this, or you've studied from an international board, IB curriculum, A-levels, and you've done the right level classes, which could be counted towards your credit transfers. That means those many classes you could, you know, not do at the university. So they would waive those classes off for you. That means you're going to not pay for those classes and bring the requirements down. There's something called as continued scholarship, which means now suppose Futila and the answer, we're very affordable. So we don't offer scholarships to international students in the first year. But if you do well with us in the first year, we offer scholarships in the second year. And then when you're transferring to a university, again, there are a lot of universities that offer transfer scholarships. So students, please understand that once you're enrolled at a university, even if you've not got a scholarship initially, you can go there, do well, improve your GPA, show them overall progress, and get a scholarship in the subsequent semesters and years. So there is continued scholarship, okay? And lastly, look at a community college. A community college is a great way to begin your undergrad studies. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about community colleges in the next five to 10 minutes, and then we'll uh, throw open for questions. Now, you know your bachelor's degree or undergraduate program in the US is typically four years of education. Community colleges are two-year institutions. So what they provide are transfer programs with universities in the US. That means because community colleges like Futil and Dianza, we are two-year institutions, we give you the first and second year of your bachelor's degree program. But what you study with us is university level classes at half the cost. After completing two years with us, transfer directly into the third year of a university where you complete the last two years, your third and fourth years. And whichever university you transfer to, you get your bachelor's degree from that university. So let's say student A comes to Foothill College, does two years, transfers to UCLA. And student B goes directly in the first year to UCLA. At the end of the fourth year, both student A and B have the same bachelor's degree from UCLA without any differentiation. That's the concept of community colleges. And you have more than 1,000 community colleges in the US. Um, there are 115 in California, and the Californian Community College is one of the largest college systems of USA. It's very common to begin your undergrad studies at a community college in the US, do university level classes in the first two years, save money, that's the most important feature, and then transfer. Barack Obama had started his bachelor's degree. He did two years at a community college in the US. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, co-founders of Apple, were students of Foothill De Anza. So Steve Wozniak studied two years at De Anza and transferred to UC Berkeley. Chancellor of UCLA, Jenny D. Block, he was a student of Foothill College. He studied two years with us and transferred to Stanford. This means after doing two years at a community college, you can transfer to any university in the US. All universities in the US accept transfer students from community colleges, but of course, you got to meet the requirements of transfer. You got to ensure your program is available at the university that you want to transfer to. So it's a common concept. Uh, that's a little bit about community colleges. The top five reasons why you should choose a community college or put the answer, I'm gonna give you in the next slide. But this is literally the structure. You complete grade 12, 
you go to a community college do the first and second year from the community college then in the third year you transfer to one of the universities complete your last two years and get your bachelor's degree this is a community college set up typically for somebody who's considering california okay the good thing about californian community colleges there are 115 is that um, all 115 californian community colleges have very clear transfer agreements with all universities in california that are listed on this website called assist.org so the uh, you know transfer agreements with uh, university of california campuses california state universities all of those are listed on assist.org so there's clarity in the agreements okay 50 percent americans some facts for you begin their undergrad studies at a community college and then transfer after two years to get their bachelor's degree uh, at Futil and Dianza, we have 30,000 students on campus at both Futil and Dianza together. Of these, 3,800 are international. We're ranked number two out of all community colleges in the US for hosting the largest number of international students. So we have a huge international student body and they come from 90 different countries. So there's a lot of diversity and it's very common to do this in the US. Now, what are the reasons that you should choose a community college? Saves a lot of cost, a lot of cost. Uh, the class sizes at community colleges are very small and the environment is very supportive. So besides cost, the other reason why students choose community colleges are because we don't have huge classes like the big public universities or many universities. Uh, our class sizes are small. They're all taught by faculty and not teaching assistants. We give extra services like at Foothill De Anza, you have a student success center. You have tutoring centers where you can sit with faculty for your week areas. We have education counselors to make your education plans to guide you for transfers. Unmatched, you know, support that's given to international students. Um, another thing, most of the community colleges don't require SAT. Foothill De Anza does not require SAT to come here and even to transfer to most of the universities. So if you're looking to transfer to UCLA, UC Berkeley, NYU, Boston, SAT is not required. But sometimes when you have the caliber of going to MIT, Stanford, you may require SAT while transferring. So one of our students transferred to MIT on a fully funded mechanical engineering program. So he saved a lot of money in the first two years with us. And then he transferred to MIT on a fully funded mechanical engineering program. And uh, so if you're looking at that kind of transfers, a, you got to be realistic because it's still competitive and you need to have the right uh, approach and caliber. But there are scholarships available at the transfer stage as well. Uh, yeah, now speaking mainly about Foothill De Anza, which I really want to tell you all, we are ranked number one for our transfers to the University of California campuses, the UCs like you call it in India. So um, that's something we're very proud of. Uh, most of our students go to UCLA, UC Berkeley, NYU, uh, Boston. Some go to Michigan and Arbor. Some even go outside the US to UBC in Canada, University of Sydney in Australia. So the one thing that I want to tell you from this is you're not restricted to only transfer to those universities that are located in that state or with which we have transfer agreements. All universities in the US accept transfer students and you can even transfer outside the US to countries like Canada, Australia, UK. So be mindful of that. All you got to do is understand the transfer requirements and the right person to tell you about transfer requirements is a transfer counselor at a community college or the website of the university that you want to transfer to. They will have a transfer page on the website or you can write to the transfer counselor, admission officer, write to the right person to get the right information. This is a cost comparison of Futil De Anza. So Futil and De Anza, we are two community colleges. We are located in the Silicon Valley near San Francisco in California, perfect location. The weather is amazing. It's the Californian sunny weather. Uh, it's very safe. We are ranked for our safety. And uh, we are surrounded by the top 6,000 companies of the world headquartered. You are in the tech hub of the world. So we are very close to the headquarters of Google, uh, Apple, Stanford University. And this is the cost comparison. So our annual international tuition is $8,064. Now, if you compare it with some of the universities in California, you'll realize tuition wise, we are 7,000 lesser. So huge amounts that you save. Um, yeah, so I've just put in Stanford, UC Berkeley, San Francisco State University. You can compare and see for yourself how affordable we are. But mind you students, this is just the tuition for one year. You've got to add another 15 to 17,000 to this figure for your living, insurance, food, transport, everything, pocket money, okay? Um, 
And when I say add 15 to 70,000, you need to add to all of them, not only for the answer. So Stanford would be 55,000 is just the tuition, another 15, 20,000 for your living and other expenses. So put in the answer, our total cost of attendance come to around, comes to around $26,750. But you can bring this down by finding your own accommodation because we don't have on-campus housing. We pre-arrange accommodation for you if you want us to. Like we give you homestay opportunities or students share accommodation. But if you have a relative or you want to do that on your own, you can save that money or you can stay like in a pre-arranged accommodation through us for the first quarter, make friends and then move out. So there are options. You can work part time with us and many ways to save your cost. But just wanted to give you a cost comparison. How does the transfer work? OK, now in the US, whether you're studying a computer science program at the bachelor's level or you're doing management or you're doing, let's say, psychology. The first two years is mainly focused on lower division classes and general education classes. So your bachelor's degree is divided into general education classes, major classes, and electives. You got to meet the general education requirements before you move on to major class requirements and before you get the degree. So the general education class requirements are literally transferable and common. So a student who's studying computer science also has to take a few courses from a humanities program or a social science program, a language. Similarly, with somebody who's studying management, you have to take a couple of uh, programs, you know, I mean, a couple of courses from, let's say, the pure sciences or the language. So that is, that is what US is known for, flexibility in education, general education class requirements. Out of the 120 credits that you have to earn to get your bachelor's degree, 60 to 70, I would say, would come from general education class requirements. And this would vary as per universities, but most of the times you could take this as an average. And that's why students spend the first and second year doing general education and lower division class requirements. So that's completely transferable. And that is what you study at a community college. You focus on completing your general education, lower class division requirements because they are university level classes and they're completely transferable. So that's how the transfers work. Um, and uh, Futil and Dianza, we have more than 100. To, to be precise, we have around 130 transfer agreements with universities in the US. We have 40 transfer admission guarantees and preferences. Uh, we also are ranked number one for our transfers to the University of California campuses. So it's definitely easier to get to these big names through the community college route. And you're also spending lesser. So that's important. Um, let me show you. These are some transfer agreements that we have at Putil De Anza. But uh, so all the 23 California state universities, uh, they fall under our transfer admission guarantee. Uh, six University of California campuses fall under transfer admission guarantee. Now, transfer admission guarantee, as they call it, tag, you know, the tags in the US, they are not, it's not like a miracle. It means you still have to meet the requirements of transfer, but they are doable because you have the right supportive environment and guidance. And as long as you pass at Futil or Dianza, you know you will at least transfer somewhere. But which one? It depends on how you do with us in the first two years. So that's something I wanted to point out. Uh, yeah, this is just a slide. I've just put in two pictures of Futil de Anza and the Silicon Valley. And um, yeah, I've already told you about these things, our transfer guarantees and regular agreements. So these are some of our transfer numbers from 2019. How many students transferred to the different University of California campuses? These are just the international transfer numbers. The regular, like overall, there would be thousands of students transferring, but these are some international numbers for you. And these are some other universities. So we have students transferring to USC, uh, like I said, Ohio State, Purdue. You can go where you like, just meet the requirements of transfer. In fact, a very well-known Indian, Sahil Dodia, was a student at Futil, College, Futil De Anza. He did two years with us and then transferred to USC. Um, so you can read a little more about Sahil Dodia. He, he's on LinkedIn as well. So that's assist.org, where I told you all Californian community colleges have their transfer agreements with the University of California or California State Universities in the US listed. Um, some of our alumni, I've already told you, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, co-founders of Apple have studied with us. Uh, Jenny D. Block, Chancellor of UCLA has studied with us. Um, I know a lot of our students are doing internships at Apple, Google, Tesla, Stanford University. One of my Indian students just called me last week and told me he's going to do, start his internship at Apple this um, summer, I mean, he, in the next month. So despite all of this, you know the opportunities are unmatched. 
And that's my contact information in case you need to get in touch with me. Uh, I'm accessible over a phone call or WhatsApp because I live in Mumbai. I'm based out of Mumbai. I'm their assistant director for South Asia. And that's my email ID. I'm going to now start taking questions. I know there are quite a few. Yes, please go ahead, Dipali. Thank you. Welcome. So, Shruti, uh, will our courses match that of our target transfer university so that we can... Yes, Shruti. If the courses were not of the university level, there would be no transfer agreements and the transfers would never happen. So the courses that you study at Foothill or De Anza or any community college, they match the university level classes. Okay. So especially I can talk about Foothill De Anza. Our classes are at par of university classes and we are part of the same education system as the University of California campuses and the California State Universities. So the answer is yes, it's of that level. Where is your college located? Silicon Valley near San Francisco in California. Putin is uh, located at Los Altos Hills, very close to the headquarters of Google and Stanford University. De Anza is in the city of Cupertino near the headquarters of Apple. 40, 45 minutes away from San Francisco and around 25, 30 minutes away from San Jose, the top cities for young professionals. What is the minimum requirement for getting admission and scholarship for UCs, University of California campuses, it's competitive, but you can go on their website and find that out. Uh, but yes, you need to be of a very competitive, uh, at a very competitive stage to get directly into a University of California campus. And if you get in directly, it's great. But um, if not, you can always consider a foothill de Anza and then transfer there. Uh, one thing is it will save a lot of cost. And secondly, getting to one of these top universities through us is easier because SAD is not required. And even when you're transferring, you know, you know what is required to go there and it becomes easier. Uh, okay, so we don't have scholarships in the first year, but we give, uh, so this is for Bal Ranka. We give you scholarships in the second year up to $5,000. But it depends on how you did with us in the first year. It totally depends on your GPA. So you've got to be competitive. And also you need the main money in the last two years because the third and fourth year after you transfer, you're going to pay the university cost as they are giving you the major classes and the bachelor's degree, right? So um, there are a lot of universities that offer transfer scholarships if you've done well with us in the first two years. So they'll see your performance only with us in the first two years and then offer that transfer scholarship. Um, 70% in 10th and 12th, but I get my GPA at your college much. Huh? No, we are more flexible when we admit students, Neha. It is, uh, our requirements are very, very doable. So we look at a progressive score and with this kind of a background in the 10th, especially you're going to get an, is what I feel, you're going to be fine. But what we look at besides, so we don't need SAT. We just need your high school transcripts, your mark sheets, because if you're a CBSE or ISE student, you get mark sheets, that's fine. Uh, but we also need one of the language proficiency scores like IELTS or TOEFL or Duolingo, PTE. Our requirements are on the website. If you're taking IELTS, we need 6.0 overall. If you're taking TOEFL, it's 61. We accept Duolingo at 95 English test, or you can take PTE with 45, but we're very particular on these um, requirements. If my major is not offered by community college, can I still enroll and then transfer? So we offer more than 100 programs. It is so flexible that if you start, let's say with a particular program and you want to transfer into another program, it's fine because you're mainly going to do general education class requirements. Having said this, if you've started with an art program with no classes in physics and math and you want to suddenly transfer into engineering, it's not easy. But if you're transferring within, if you want to change your major, even after doing a few uh, of the first year with us or first two years, you know, even when you want to get into the second year, if you want to change your major, that's fine, but you should be within the reasonable uh, radius of what you're doing. So the answer is yes. That's what US is known for, flexibility. You can also do two areas of study simultaneously to begin with. We have more than, I think, 80 to 90 Indian students on campus, but I don't know the current figures because they change every year. See, to give you a particular nationality number is difficult because we are community colleges, so the transfers happen every year. So I think currently there would be 80 or between 80 and 100. Uh, visa, oh, very good question. So I know there are a lot of rumors, I would say, that it's difficult to get the visa for a community college. Let me tell you, we are accredited by WASC, Western Association of Schools and Colleges. We are a community college that is ranked number one for our transfers to the University of California campuses. 
Luckily, Futil de Anza does not have a lot of visa rejections and visa rejections could happen if the student is not able to uh, convey his or her profile rightly. It does not happen because of a particular institution, especially an institution like Futil de Anza because we have the accreditation and the rankings. Um, we are lucky and I'm happy to tell you that our visa denials are lesser than many universities that I know of. So uh, we have a good history of visa approvals. Don't worry about that. And when you're transferring to a university, you don't need to apply for a visa again. If you're coming to a community college and you go for your visa interview, if you qualify, you'll get the same five years visa that any other student gets for a university because we are a legitimate education institution in the US. It's not like a pathway institution. It's a proper legitimate institution. Uh, another thing when I'm talking about CPT and OPT, um, you know, community colleges, after doing two years with us, you can directly transfer to a university or you can spend a few extra months and take an associate's degree. Community colleges offer associate's degree in the US. It's a degree between your high school and bachelor's. So with that degree, you get to work on OPT for one year and then you can transfer. So that's an option. You don't always need to take the associate's degree to transfer, but if you want to, you can. Um, so CPT is mainly for internships within and OPT is optional practical training after you've gotten your degree. That's the main difference. And uh, you have your DSO designated school official and immigration officer on campus. They will give you the right directions when to apply for it, how to apply for it, what is the maximum time you can use it and all of that. The recommendations of websites that mentions universities by scholarships offered. Each university in itself can give this to you, but there is a lot of information about scholarships on the website of every university. There's clear communication. But if you're talking about a website that maybe US News, you can try and go to US News and see if they're readily giving you that already. But I always recommend go on the website of every university and check because that's the most updated. Uh, it's not always possible to cover the entire expense by doing on-campus jobs, but you can at least get your pocket money and most of it covered. Uh, we pay students, it depends on the jobs, like if you're working in the international student department, you're working with a professor, it totally depends. It could be $8 an hour, $10 an hour, it depends. Um, if a university, does it mean we don't submit English language? No, 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 English language requirements, more, all universities require in the US. Uh, obviously, if you're an international student, we can wave it off if you study from an international curriculum. And let's say you are an IB student, your English is above four. So we can wave it off. If you've taken SAT, though we don't require it and you got more than 500 on English, we can wave it off. But I always recommend taking one of the English proficiency tests because it is also it also helps with the visa. So the question that English requirements can be waved off only if you're an international uh, student of an international curriculum and you've gotten that score. Your final degree, Supriya, comes from the university that you've transferred to, not from us. They give you the bachelor's degree. I have already spoken about my transfers, but you can visit our website, international.fhda.edu, and you can explore. Um, even our brochure gives you the, I'll, I'll see if Kunal, if I can just put up my brochure as an attachment, you can see the transfer list and all Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. In the chat, <laughs> oh, kindly go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. Bank loans are fine students, but to be very honest, undergrad students avoid doing this. But if you take a bank loan and there's a reason and you can explain it, it's absolutely fine. And I'm talking from the visa perspective. We don't mind taking that as a financial proof for granting you the I-20, okay, or admission. Uh, but like we don't need financial documents for admissions, but some universities ask for it, I know. Bank loans are fine. But if you can avoid it for the visa, it's great. If not, I'm not saying that you won't get the visa with the bank loan. It's just that you need to have a reason if you're asked. So it's absolutely fine. <laughs> so Rahul, I can assure you that what's mentioned on the I-20 and website for most universities, I don't know which one did you read, is accurate. Go on the international page of the university and read the cost of attendance. And if there's confusion, just email them because Universities are very good with emails and they'll give you the right structure. Like at Futil De Anza, if you see our I-20 cost is $26,750 and the same is mentioned on the website. So I'm not sure which one you looked at, but you can always email and ask. Shruti, 
I know you've shared your email ID. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to now try and upload the brochure. I don't think Kunal, it's allowing me to do that on the chat. Um, okay, let me get out of Q and. Can you see me? Um, let me see the chat window. But will the students be able to access it from the chat window? They will, right? Yes. Okay. But no, it does not allow me to. Um... Uh, okay. So can you just one second? Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to type in the Q&A section. I think Q&A will be, uh, they can all read it, right? They will be able to read it. Okay, I'll put the link for this. Let me stop sharing my screen and put in a few links. On the link, you can download the brochure. I'll also put in our international website link. So yeah, just give me a moment. And if you have more questions, please keep asking. I'll look at those. Mm. Okay. Just give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to put in some important information. Um, so let me give you uh, the international website and the link where you can download the brochure. Also our social media links if you are interested. Um, okay. So, um, okay, I've put it on the chat. This is, um, this is an online, you know, portal where you can download a brochure, the view book. Um, and you can also go to our international website. You just paste all of this. That's our website. Let me give you the link. And you already know my information, like my email ID and contact number. So you can reach out as well. I think we just have five more minutes for the session to end, but just uh, let me put that information for y'all. Okay, I'm going to paste the online brochure as uh, that I've already done. I'm going to paste the link where you can see our admission requirements and the international admission page. If any of you are an American citizen, your application link is different. Please be mindful of that. So I've posted a few links for you. I'll share my email ID once again on chat. And my contact number. Okay. Yes, any other questions? Um, I think there are questions. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. If you that's scroll fine. down, there are questions that have been posted. I think you went the other way around. I think, uh, okay. yeah, if you scroll down all the way down, there are about three or four. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay. What are your application document requirements and wh when should we apply? Shruti, I've posted that um, so you can apply. Uh, as soon as you're ready, now if you're looking for fall 21, we have a relaxed deadline, so you can apply this year towards the end, next year early, up to you. Our deadline is usually up to June, uh, and our intakes are January, April, and September, but for the September intake, it's up to June. However, I don't recommend you apply later than May, because you need to also figure out housing and visa, right? So I've pasted the application requirements. We mainly need your passport copy, mark sheets or transcripts of high school, and your ILTS or TOEFL or Duolingo or PTE test if you don't qualify for a language waiver. To qualify for a language waiver, you need to be from one of the uh, international boards, like you should have studied it uh, with a particular requirement, which is pasted, or you should have more than 500 on the SAT English test. But still, I recommend you take the English language test. It really helps for the visa. What are your depart? Would your department help us in selecting on campus, how off campus housing, and how will you ensure safety? Supriya, so we can only give you placement if you take it through us. So we have an international 
uh, ISP, International Student Placement Cell. They arrange pre, uh, you know, we pre-arrange accommodation. So homestay is very safe because they're scrutinized before you're put in there. So, and we're doing it since almost, I don't know how many years, we're more than 60 years old. So don't worry. Uh, also, a lot of students are already doing it. 3,800 international students, most of them begin with homestay or student share accommodation. We have the department which is active throughout. So even if you have a problem, you can report and immediately we'll change it for you, but they're scrutinized, so don't worry. So homestay is where you live with the local family. You have your private bedroom. They cook for you. If you want, you get your breakfast, dinner, so. Student share accommodation is where you live with other students. Now, if you don't want us to prearrange it, then you've got to find your own accommodation and we don't help with that. But you can go to the international page on Facebook or Futil or De Anza, or you can go to Twitter or Instagram, connect with our current students and find out more about that if you're looking to do it on your own. But it is safe. Silicon Valley in itself is very safe. And safety is also something which is in your hands. As long as you're following the given rules, you'll be fine. How many UC universities will we be applying to when we transfer? Up to you. You can sign the tag with only one. Transfer admission guarantee you can sign with only one for your spot. But otherwise you can apply to how many ever you like. It's up to you. You'll have a transfer guidance counselor, the transfer center. We have a transfer fairs. Universities from the UCs and other universities, they, uh, you know, um, I mean, counselors from the other UC universities and other university campuses come to Foothill or De Anza regularly to counsel you. So for example, uh, the counselor of University of California, Berkeley, will come to our campus, counsel, meet with students. You'll be informed in advance. You've got to book your appointment. And there are transfer fairs that happen. Uh, you have transfer agreements that are given to you. So there is clarity. But you can apply to however you want to. And uh, there's an entire guidance, application guidance for transfer. So don't worry too much about it. So the most important thing is that we offer so much of support that you are guided right from the first quarter, you're given a study plan, you know, what classes to select. Uh, you have your transfer success center. So there's a lot. Okay, some students have shared their email IDs with me, which is great. I'll try and paste all of those. Um, thanks Akshay for sharing it with me. And I think there was another student also, Shruti and Akshay. So if you're interested students, I, if you want to share details, um, if I can take five, 10 minutes extra, put in your full name, date of birth, email ID, and what grade are you in, whether you're in 11, 12, put all of this in one chat so I can readily save it to my laptop. So because I need your full name, your email ID, date of birth to enter you on my system so you can get an email from us with more information. And what grade are you in currently? Like if you're in grade 11, if you've started grade level, uh, then say grade 11. If you are completed grade 11, starting grade 12, then please say grade 12. So you can just put that down and I'll, I'll ensure that you're on our system so you can get an email with more communication. So Akshaya has shared her details. Um, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Dipali. There's something yeah. about campus size or something. There was something that has come up as well in the Q and A. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 that's fine. I know I'm not checking that uh, because I'm just okay. Hold on. Oh, sure. So Rahul, we have 78 student organizations. Uh, you can participate in an organization or if you make a group of your own, you can start a student club. So we have 78 student clubs and organizations. We have athletics. Um, so you can practice athletics. We are huge. You know, we are like 250 acres together, Putil De Anza. We have an environmental study center, uh, environmental science center, where there are more than 400 species of plants. If you want to study science, technology, engineering, math, we have a STEM center. We have um, an observatory on campus. We have a planetarium on campus. We have theaters on campus, clubs like dance, uh, music clubs, computer science clubs physics clubs, there's so much. We also have something called as the Cross Center for Innovation, the maker space, where you can actually make your own uh, things with, you know, equipments and guidance and lectures. And people, students from other universities and colleges also come to use that. So the campuses are lovely. They're huge. We're at par with what we offer. Like we're at par with universities when it comes to student experience. Okay. So good question. Yeah, so you're not going to be deprived of your athletics and your student clubs. 
you have it all. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, just let me check. Thank you. No problem. For a total of uh, 19 or 20 questions, I think we've answered most of them as far yeah. as I'm seeing. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, like um, if you have any questions, students, we are going to be around for two more minutes or maybe five more minutes at the max. Just put those questions down and no question is wrong or right. So please ask. And neither Kunal nor I will judge you. That's a promise. So please ask your questions. Sai, uh, Supriya, and Akshay, you all have shared your email IDs. Can you at least share your date of birth? Because that I would need to enter you on the system. Just put in your date of birth. Um, yeah. I think there are about three or four. I think there's Rahul, Tina and uh, Hari Mohan who are online. Okay, so oh, that's fine. Thanks for that as well because I'm on the... No, 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 no problem. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I think that's about it. I've taken note of all the four students who shared their email IDs. Um, if there are any, any in the q and I'm not sure, but I'll just quickly yeah, glance. I'm through it as well. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. No, no, that's fine, Kunal. I don't see any in the Q&A. From the chat, I've taken those down. So, perfect. I think we're good to go. Thank you so much for joining our students. And I think that's about it. Uh, yes, I can just going through the email addresses. One, two, three, four, four, five. Five? Who did I miss? One, two, three, four. That's correct. Four, four. I'm so sorry. Okay. That's fine. Just going through it. And ah. I just want to make sure we cover all the questions. Yes. Campus activities. Sorry, your voice is breaking up. What's that? Was the last one. So, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, Kunal. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me clearly now? Sorry, there was some yes. internet. No Thank problem. you so much, Ms. Dipali, for joining us. I hope uh, the one hour that you provided was productive and you enjoyed our session. Uh, with the students uh, and the parents who were present here today. Uh, students, attendees, as you know, the session is recorded and will be shared. Uh, Ms. Dipali, I'll also be sharing with you um, the recording so you can share it with other families and students that you have in touch for. But sure. uh, thank you so much for taking your kind time. I know uh, Saturday evening, I know it's late in the evening here. So thank you so much. And I sincerely look forward to keeping in touch with you. Wish you the best and look forward. I'm sure this, these conversations with students will continue way after this uh, webinar engagement is over. So thank you once again, and I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you, Kunal. It was really Thank nice you. being Take part care. of this. Thank Bye. You. Bye.